Right now, aid and rescue workers from around the globe are flocking to help Turkey after the devastating earthquake that hit almost a week ago. But in war-torn Syria, which was also hit, the story is very different. The country has been in a brutal civil war since 2014, which has complicated rescue efforts from outside nations. NPR reports today that they saw, quote, no international crews of rescuers, no trucks loaded with machinery or medical aid, no streams of ambulances to save the wounded. The border crossing into Syria was empty and silent. So rescue and recovery efforts have been left to the Syria Civil Defense, better known as the White Helmets, which is a group of volunteers trying to save their friends, their families, and, and more. Nation after this disaster who have been carrying out similar work since the start of the Civil War. They've been doing it for years now. And overnight, the White Helmets miraculously rescued two young girls from the rubble in Jandiris. But with little aid from the outside and hope in the region dwindling fast, that remains the challenge. Earlier today, I spoke with a member of the White Helmets, Ismail Abdullah, about his work on the ground. Ismail Abdullah, thank you very much for joining us. Um, you're there on the ground. Talk to me about what it's like. What is the situation right now on the ground in Syria where you are? After six days of uh, carrying out uh, search and rescue operations, we reached a point that we cannot and we, uh, there are no uh, survivors. Now we are in next stage or next phase of recovering the dead bodies. Uh, this happened because we, uh, after six days, uh, in the first day and at the beginning, we said and declared uh, this area and this catastrophe needs international effort means other parties bigger than us who had the capacity to handle this disaster, but no one, respond, no one responded until uh, today. And we reached from yesterday, maybe, after, seven, after 70 hours of carrying out search and rescue operations, we, uh, we lost and we lost the hope of uh, getting people alive beneath rubble. It has been, as you said, almost six days. What are your biggest concerns at this point? I mean, I know you don't sound very optimistic, but do you believe there could still be survivors under the rubble as you get some international assistance? Uh, after more than... Uh, six days and 100 and uh, more than 120 uh, hours of work uh, we uh, lost hope we lost hope and uh, uh, we had miracle before and we deep inside we feel there's something that uh, tell us maybe maybe that we will uh, get people alive from being in trouble but the reality is, it has been a long time, a week, almost a week. Uh, right. And uh, those stuck under the rubble, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult and uh, uh, it's difficult to get people alive from under the rubble after all this time. And even if we got the assistant today or tomorrow. There may be people who are not familiar with the situation, broadly speaking, about Syria. How has the civil war in Syria impacted and complicated your recovery efforts? Uh, yeah, it's complicated for those who don't know the context of Syria. I'll, uh, in a brief, I will explain it in uh, one line. Uh, Northwest Syria, an area in the north that now hosts most of the people who were displaced from other parts of Syria since 2014 up to now. They were uh, in many cities uh, in parts of Syria, and all of uh, all of them now uh, living in the in Northwest Syria after the bombings and displacement that were exposed in their cities and uh, and uh, and villages. The situation is very complex because you know 
with the regime uh, bombed this area uh, over uh, over the past years. It destroyed infrastructure, destroyed hospitals, and uh, made uh, made the medical points as target for the for the force uh, its forces. Uh, then the earthquake came and hit the region, which made this big catastrophe that, uh, as we mentioned before, we can, as white helmets and an institution that operate in northwest Syria cannot handle. Uh, we appealed for help. No one responded. And now we're losing many, many lives. Uh, we lost hope uh, and uh, we lost many lives we could have saved it if they supported us after right. 40 uh, after 20 40 hours of, uh, from the earthquake yeah. let me ask you if i can finally as, as you look forward to the next phase of this operation um, not so much a rescue but perhaps a recovery operation what do you need from the international community? What can other nations and people watching this do to help you and the people of Syria at this moment? This moment, and as we speak, and this week and the weeks after, the people who lost their houses uh, need assistance. The displaced people need assistance. What we need from international community uh, to, uh, to send the convoys the help for those who were affected to send medical supplies for the injured to receive proper treatment, uh, not to let the injured to die from their injury. Uh, what we need uh, equipment that help us in removing the rubble and uh, somehow to enable us to help uh, our community to recover. Uh, from the impact of the earthquake so uh, people can uh, resume to their lives and uh, can be uh, get back to normalcy of their lives. Uh, Ismail Abdullah live for us in Syria. Ismail, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate your time. Uh, my best to you and all of uh, your colleagues still working uh, to rescue and recover people in Syria. Thank you for your time. Thank you.